This injection to exercise 9.5 on the natural logarithmic function of y equals to log base e of x, starting on page 408 of your textbook. A couple of properties of the log base e of x, or the natural logarithmic function, uh, of course, it is the inverse of our e to the power of x. So we're still applying the the uh, Euler's number, and later on when we do the differentiation of logarithmic functions, specifically in the natural one, you notice it has a very unique differentiation as well. So our original function, of course, is here. That is our y equals to e to the power of x, and we reflect it. It's reflected as or with all inverse functions. It's reflected across the y equals the x line, which means we have a function that looks like this. It's strictly increasing, increasing quickly at first, and then more slowly. It's still positive, still strictly increasing, but it's more slow. The gradient of the graph is always decreasing. So we start off extremely positive. It becomes slightly less positive, and the less positive, less positive, but it's still always going to be decreasing. At no point should the function ever flip back on itself, so the function should never be able to go backwards like this. So it's always going to have a decreasing gradient, but it's never going to have a negative gradient. A one-to-one -one function, of course, it's x-intercept of 1 in our general natural, or our, our generic natural logarithmic function. x-intercept of 1, of course, because log base e of 1 equals 0. Our domain is always going to be positive, where x is element of all real values, excluding obviously excluding because it's not a positive real value, but excluding zero. Our range is all real values. Our y-axis is asymptote. And as, of course, as x increases, our y approaches infinity. And as x approaches zero, our y approaches negative infinity as well. Down over here, you can see two graphs or two uh, sections of text, essentially telling you the same thing that you already know, which is the transformations that we apply for our other polynomials also apply for our logarithmic graphs. If we have a negative in front of our x value here, of course, it's going to mean it's going to be reflected across the y-axis, same as our, for example, f of x, where it's a parabola. If you have a negative in the front, for example, over here, it's going to be re reflected across the x-axis, and the same thing applies, or very similar notion applies for our translations as well. Let's look at an example here. I've just included the answer as well, so we can talk about it. But the first part says to sketch the function of f of x equals the log base e of x. We're already familiar with this graph. Of course, please make sure that when you're drawing a graph, regardless of how basic the function is, you need to specify the equation of the asymptote or make it very clear. So in this case, of course, x equals 0. We need to specify as the asymptote. Our Exponential equations will have a horizontal asymptote, and of course that means our logarithmic equations have a vertical asymptote. Using the mapping of points gets the graph of y equals to 1 minus 3 times log base e of 8 minus 4x. In this case, it's specifying mapping of points. You don't need to do that in, in most assessment circumstances, but that would just imply that you substitute a value of, for example, x equals 1, x equals 2, etc. to see where that would go. Of course, I can see that it's going to be reflected. It's reflected and it's in front of the x, which means it's going to be reflected uh, across the y-axis, right? So instead of the function looking like this, it's going to end up looking, apologies, it's going to end up looking something like this, okay? And then, of course, the because this would be the same as y equals to 1 minus 3 log base e, I'm just writing that as ln, our natural logarithm, ln of negative 4 bracket x minus 2, we're going to be shifting two units to the right, of course, and then the following transformations would also apply as well. Okay. This question here is a classic example of a question that you might be seeing in an assessment. The rule of function with the graph shows is the form of y equals to a times log base e of x minus b. Of course, that means we've got a translation in the x-axis, and then we've also got a dilation as well in the y-axis. Find the values of a and b and hence find the state of the equation of the function. The first thing I'm going to do is try to substitute 0, 1. That is the equation, the, uh, the uh, coordinate, sorry, that have been given to me. It seems a bit easier to work with. I'm going to substitute that into my generic equation, which means that I get 1 equals to a times log base e of 0 minus b. Or if I rewrite that, of course, that just gives me a times log base e of negative b. If I substitute the point negative 2, 0, of course, I get 0 equals to a times log base e of negative 2 minus b. In this scenario, because it's just the same as with any other function, and except in this case, I've got some extra steps involved, I'm going to be using my simultaneous equations. 
The difficult part is that if I try to subtract it, it's going to get very difficult to try and rearrange things. So instead, I'm going to divide them, keeping in mind my log laws. So once I do that, I can say, and because I've got the negative 2 minus b, I'm going to put that on top. 0 equals to a times log base e of negative 2 minus b divided by, and I'm just going to write the bottom one here, so that becomes divided by 1 equals to a times log base e of negative b. Of course, because it's a simplification, these two cancel out, and that becomes 0. So we end up with 0 equals to log base e of n, uh, log, log base e of negative 2 minus b over log base e of negative b. Because I'm just simplifying, I know that negative 2 minus b right and we've got negative b on the bottom i can multiply both sides by log base e of negative b which then becomes zero equals to log base e of negative two minus b right of course e to the power of negative two minus b equals to what of course equals to zero so therefore if i get negative two minus b oh sorry my apologies let me rearrange that it's e to the power of zero equals to negative two minus b once I've done that, of course, because I know that e to the power of 0 is just 1, I have negative 2 minus b equals to 1, b equals to negative 3. Therefore, my asymptote is going to be at x equals to negative 3. So, x equals 2. Here we go. That should be positive 3. Apologies. b equals to positive 3. Wait one second, sorry. Negative 2 minus b, add negative 2. So add 2 on both sides, you know, negative, negative b is correct, apologies. It is going to be at x equals to negative 3. And then we end up with 1 equals to a times by ln of 3. I'm substituting my value back in into this one right there. And we end up with a equals to 1 over ln of 3. So when the equation says state the function or the equation of the function, we don't just leave it there. We're at y equals 2 because it's a times ln x minus b. It becomes ln of x plus 3 over ln of 3. A little bit, a couple of extra steps, but it's important that we make sure that we read the question properly and finalize our response as necessary. And don't forget that when you're working simultaneous equations, subtraction can be very difficult when you're using logarithms, so don't forget your log laws as well.